and, and at times you almost feel a little bit torn between what you feel society and what you feel you should do and what you want to do. And I just want to speak peace over you that, that you're one, right? The Lord your God is one God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You're one, spirit, soul, body. Don't feel like you have to shut down your creative side Amen. because now you need to be more practical and you got to grow up and you got to get a job and I can't do that. I can't pursue my dreams, right? Some of that is swirling around you. Some of that is, I'm not picking on your parents. I don't know if you're here. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. It's not, it's not them. I said it's not them. But some of that just is in the culture, the environment. It's the desire to achieve. I'm from Jersey. I gotta, and so I just want to pray over you in Jesus' name that, that I wish God would show me the exact, you're going to be a, because sometimes he does. I don't feel that. What I see is the Holy Spirit saying, lift up your hands, you know, in worship. But it's not, it's like, Daddy, pick me up. And the wind of the Spirit moving you any which way he pleases. And so that says to me, it requires trust, faith, intimacy, and tuning. Listen to mom and dad. They're obviously here. They love Jesus. But you're going to have to tune down the opinions of others, even what you think you're supposed to be doing. Because God's going to move you in places. So instead of just one destination, I'm going to be an accountant. You're going to have multiple things that you're going to experience. So, Father, I bless right now my little sister in Jesus' name. And I just give you permission to dream. Dream, 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 dream. And draw, 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 draw. And write, 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 write. And have fun, have fun, have fun, have fun, have fun. And we just break off whoo, the feeling that she's got to have it all figured out by yesterday. In Jesus' name. Amen. Does that make sense? Anything not make sense? Okay. All right. So let's say you were to, um, Lord help me, let's say you were to bring me into the White House to prophesy. I'm sure God, by his faith, generosity would flow through me. I have prophesied over some governors and I have done some of that. But I'm called the family. My Metron, my Seven Mountain, is family. I was getting commissioned by HIM. And I'm like, Lord, okay, so I'm a prophet to who? Does that make sense? Now I'm getting invited everywhere. But there was a season where I was just pastoring faithfully, pastoring, pastoring. And I said, God, you're calling me as a prophet to this movement and church? I'm like, to who? And I heard this clearly, family. A prophet in the family mountain? What does that even mean? I'll tell you what, I see more miracles in my ministry is restoration of family. Amen. It's crazy. And my message is about the heart of the Father turning. And it's like, it's just everywhere I go, I'm speaking to families. I'll call the guy out over there not knowing that this guy's a cousin. They're in an argument. And I say, you should be friends. You know, and it's crazy how God uses me. I don't have a desire to meet with the president. It's not even in my heart. When I was in more of this phase, we're always being training. I haven't arrived. When we're in this phase, I thought I was going to be famous. And so I sent Oprah Winfrey messages. <laughs> I did. I used to email her. The guy reading this has a blue shirt on. And, the, the, you know, <laughs> never heard back from Oprah. I could have been right or I was wrong. But it wasn't my sphere. I've ministered uh, prophetically. Why? Well, maybe I shouldn't say some of this stuff. I have gotten words for some celebrities. That's something that I do feel that's gonna. I'm stepping into more. I'll tell you why. And this is a part of the next session where I'm going to talk about developing and cultivating your gifts. I, all of a sudden, we'll just start. Uh, probably, maybe before I was married. So we're talking more than 18 years ago. I had a burden to pray for Britney Spears. I don't listen to Britney Spears. This was even before all that stuff that happened. And I'm like, God, I'm up at night praying for Britney Spears. And then all of a sudden, I'm in a meeting with Bobby Connor, and he stops, and he goes, you know what the Lord's got me praying for? Britney Spears. The Lord said she's somebody's daughter. And I was like, whoa, that was the first time I ever had a burden to pray for a celebrity. Then the next, I could stop praying, and I still carry in my heart Justin Bieber. I love him. Is that weird? I love him. If you're called to be a prophet to government and all you do is criticize and tear down, the atmosphere when you walk in the room will repel people. 
You have to love them. Right? And, and there's a way to train. I'm going to go give a word. Sean Bowles is like this. He's given a word to dictators. He's given a word to all different types of people. And he might hate what they stand for, but God will show him who they are. Or he'll have visions of them as little kids, as orphans, and he'll speak. It's amazing. To a dictator. Jesus loves dictators. Not what they do, but he's trying to save them. So that draw, that desire. The other one who I pray a lot for now is Miley Cyrus. You know a lot of these grew up in the church. You know that Justin Bieber was dedicated to the Lord by John or not? From the Toronto Airport Church, and they was prophesied over that he would be a, a move, lead a movement of young people into worshiping Jesus. I didn't know that. And so why am I saying that? Because what's starting to happen to me is the more I'm traveling, the more people I'm meeting, now my connection to some of these people is one or two people away. Did you hear what I said? Where it used to be like, yeah, right, Lord, I'm never going to meet a celebrity. Now I'm in the room with some. It's like, whoa. So how does that happen? All right. Are you ready? Uh, that's supposed to be an F. Platform. Favor. Influence. We talk about Metron. Let me just give you a quick. I don't want to go too deep. I, I want 8 o'clock. I, I want to give you guys a break. But let's talk about Metron. Let's say you know exactly what the pastor should be doing. Because, because you've been going to church for 20 years. And because you go to church, right, you know everything about it. Right? So, so for those people that are experts, how many people were healed on the way here? How many people got saved on the way here? How many people did you encourage? How many young men and women are you discipling? Okay, I'm not trying to cast shame on you, but there's a difference between an expert in attending church and being a Christian. So what leaders are looking for isn't somebody that you put in a position and then beg them to do something. It's people that are driven by love. They're already doing stuff whether they're asked to or not. So maybe you're the one. You're the one God put in this church to change the church. Because they're going the wrong way. And you're trying to meet with them. And you're giving them words. But they're not listening. They have a deaf ear to the Lord. Woe unto you shepherds. Listen, you do not have any favor in that area. Stop. Not saying you're not called to be a prophet. You might need some major healing. But you're in the wrong sphere. If you have to try to beg to get a word with somebody and you're banging the doors, it's because you don't have favor in that area. Are you there? I want to help you. A lot of prophets are struggling with rejection syndrome and they're hurt because they go from church to church. Prophets normally last two years in a church. Yeah, that's enough time to get everybody's attention and wow everybody and then all of a sudden now the character issues start to happen. How many of you know that a true prophet in scripture didn't have a, a pulpit? Ah! One of the tests of the heart I'm going to get into this tomorrow. This is fun. One of the tests of the heart of being a, a prophet is are you good with sharing a word to the lead intercessor, however the structure is, to the pastors, walking away and not having to manipulate or control it? Or do you need to share it on a microphone in front of everybody? Prophets in the Old Testament spoke to kings. 